Hey guys, Matt here with Davis Tech. Today we're going to go over how to machine the brass hammer. Taking your brass stock and a set of parallels, place the brass stock in the vise. Grabbing the dead blow and moving the table away from the spindle so you don't smack it with the hammer, give it a few good taps. Now my rear parallel against the fixed jaw is not moving. In this case, my other parallel is also not moving. Ideally, both of them are nice and tight in the jaws, but if you could only pick one, you want to at least have the fixed vice jaws parallel be nice and tight. With your material in the vice secured and a face mill in the spindle, we need to bring the spindle down to the part. Now, when you lower the quill, the further out the quill is, the least amount of rigidity that it has. So if we can, we want to have the quill up as high as possible locked and we bring the knee up to our part. What I like to do is I like to bring the knee to zero. And then with the spindle on top of the part, I will lower the quill till it's just barely touching my part and lock the quill in place. I can then back off my knee, move my part out from underneath my spindle and move my knee back to zero. This way I've got my face mill directly on top of my part and I haven't gouged my part by moving my tool across my, uh, my uh, brass. In calculating the speeds and feeds, you all remember this formula, I take my cutting surface speed which is going to be in your speeds and feed sheet that we gave you. It's also in the machinery resources canvas um, uh, course. And we're gonna figure out that in brass, we can run this thing up to about a thousand surface feet a minute. Now, with these machines, we're not gonna be able to do so. So in this case, let's try 300 surface feet a minute and see how that does. I go 300 times four, is 1200 and then I'm going to divide that by my cutter's diameter. So now I've come up with a spindle RPM of 600. I've got this in high gear and on this particular machine it's got a variable frequency drive so you're just going to adjust the speeds right there. And plus or minus 20, 30 RPM isn't going to make a difference. I've got it at 600 RPM, and I'm going to back it off my part. This is where I'm going to get my feed rate. If you look at your feed rate here, right now it's going 11 inches a minute. I'm actually going to slow that down. I've calculated this beforehand to be good at about 6 inches per minute. And you can see the 6 right there. You can see in here that that's actually not even. So by taking this skim pass and making sure that it's nice and flat, I can take this flat edge and rotate it against the fixed jaw. I can push this button here, the rapid switch. And that's gonna make it go fast. Okay, I've got a nice smooth surface finish. I'm gonna shut off my spindle, make sure it's stopped. And then I'm going to rotate the part I just machined. The part I just machined, see how nice that surface finish is. That's going to get rotated onto the fixed jaw. I'm going to tighten that up. And just like before, I'm going to give it a tap, making sure that I'm not hitting my 
turret. Now you don't have to sit there and wail on this thing. You can see I've got my rear parallel moving, but my fixed, the one on my fixed jaw is not. That's fine because I've gotten this, the face that's rotated against the fixed jaw is now nice and flat, which makes these faces not parallel or perpendicular, but we'll take care of those in subsequent operations. How's that looking? I'll continue rotating my part against the back edge, the fixed jaw, until all sides have been machined. Now the next thing that we need to do is make sure that our stock is indeed square. I've taken off every surface and I've rotated the freshly cut surface against the fixed jaw. So everything should be parallel and perpendicular to each other. Taking calipers, we're going to measure this dimension and we're gonna measure this dimension. And we're gonna see how they differ. And on the high side, we're gonna take off as much as we need to to make sure that both sides are the same length. I'm gonna raise up the table until these 45 degree inserts are about right in the middle with the edge I'm going to be cutting. I'll turn on the spindle and I'm gonna carefully move into the Y axis until it starts to cut. Okay, I'm looking on sight on this because I'm not gonna be able to hear it. On here, I'm gonna zero out my Y axis. Let's go, well, let's go 30 thou, why not? Like nice big chamfers. I've machined my first chamfer. Without moving the table in the Y axis, I'm going to flip my part. And sticking with the theme here, I'm gonna rotate it to the fixed jaw. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and clean so I'm not clamping any brass onto my, uh, my part there. I lightly clamp this, give her a few smacks, make sure that my part, the parallels are not moving under the part. And then I'm just going to continue machining. Again, I haven't moved the Y axis and because my part is the same height, we should get the same size chamfer. Continue rotating your part against the fixed jaw until all the chamfers have been cut. Now, I've got a beautiful fish on all sides of my part, and I've got a nice equal chamfer on all sides. Next thing that we want to do is we want to trim the ends, make them nice and pretty, and then we're going to clean them up with a chamfer. I've got a 5 8 inch end mill installed right now. You can use a half, you can use a 3 quarter, you can use an inch. It doesn't really matter. But what I do need to do is I need to calculate my speeds and feeds for the specific cutting tool that I'm using. Okay, I've made my first cut and I'm gonna zero that 
in the x-axis on the DRO. I'm going to move in 10 thou. And I'm going to take a nice finishing cut to make this nice and smooth. Shut off the spindle and take a look at that surface finish. We've got a nice, smooth surface. Now, if I need to machine this to a specific length, the next thing I do is I'd flip it over, I would take a skim pass, and I'd measure it. And then I'd proceed to take off the amount of material that would get me to the length required. Okay, so now we've got our brass part in our vise. We've faced the sides, we've put the chamfers on there. Now we need to find the hole dimension in the center of the part so that we can drill it and tap it. I've got my edge finder in the spindle. I'm gonna run the spindle at 1,000 RPM. Anywhere from 800 to 1,200 RPM is good, however. Give it a little wiggle, and I'm gonna run it in on the Y-axis until I get a kick. Once I've got that kick, I'm gonna zero out on my DRO on the Y axis. I'm gonna rinse and repeat on the opposite side. Now that I've found that other side, now what I can do is I can hit this half button and then the y-axis and it automatically cuts that in half so that when I go to zero I'm now on the center of my part. Next I'm going to do the exact same thing on the x-axis Okay, I found the exact center of my part. Now I'm ready to begin drilling and tapping operations. Next, we're gonna be drilling our brass piece so that we can begin to tap it. Now there's lots of ways of coming up with the depth that you want to drill. I have a very specific way and one that I found that has worked throughout the years. If I need to drill down 750 thou, which is what the blueprint calls for on this thread, I'm going to make sure that I have at least 750 thou with the quill raised all the way to the top. I'm going to make sure that my Z is on zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down and then I'm going to set my micrometer stop. just like that so it's nice and tight. Then I'm gonna raise my quill back up and I'm gonna raise my Z the required amount. In this case, it's 750 thou. Now, I've gone 750 thou. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna account for the tip. Now, when all blueprints call out holes, they're not referring to the tip of the drill, all right, or the apex of the hole. It's the shoulder. So the rule of thumb on that is that we take our drill diameter and we times that by 0.3. And that is going to give us our, the uh, amount that we need to go in addition to that 750 thou. This is a 2964 drill. Decimal equivalent of that is 4375, somewhere around there. I'm gonna cheat and go to my chart chart located right on the wall is going to give me that decimal equivalent if I don't know what it is. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so the decimal equivalent is uh, 0.4531, so 453 thousandths. I'm gonna pull out my calculator and go 453 thousandths times 0 0.3. 0 0.453 times 0.3. So I've gotta go in an extra 135 thou, and that's gonna account for the tip on a 118 degree drill. So 135 thou, so 50, 80, Now from here, I can go down until I hit my micrometer stop. In brass, you don't really need to peck and you don't need to have any lubrication. I don't need to take my part out of the vise. Okay, awesome. So I'm 773 thousandths. So I'm a little bit deeper, but in drilling, very, very rarely are you going to have a drill depth that requires any more than, you know, plus or minus 50 thou. Um, so we're well within tolerance here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a nice chamfer around this hole to clean it up to prepare for tapping operations. On this, we just want a slight chamfer, enough to get the tap started. And that's all it takes. I've got my tap and my tap handle, and I've got my tap guide in the spindle. This little countersunk hole in the back is for the tap guide. Goes in there like so, and I can bring the spindle down until I've got nice pressure on that. And then I'll lock the quill. From there, it's just as easy as turning the tap wrench. Okay, I've encountered my hard stop. Now I can completely back out. Now, as you can see, I've got a beautifully tapped hole. All right, so I've got my hammer head screwed into my hammer handle. Next, I need to find some parallels that are gonna enable me to clamp my uh, hammer head in there without interfering with the hammer handle. Okay, I've got my hammer in there secure. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna find the dimensions on the blueprint for the crossed hole, and we're going to edge find to find that location. Using an eighth inch drill, I'm gonna drill my cross hole. Okay guys, so we finished our hammer head and our hammer handle and got our assembly put together. Next thing left to do is grab a QC check sheet from the instructor's office, go into the inspection room, and measure the dimensions on the blueprint.